Okay, folks, welcome to your first sort of Ulster Rugby video webinar. Um, I'm joined here by Dan Soper, who's one of our assistant coaches with our senior squad, specifically working on skills. Um, we've got a few questions um, which we're going to try and cover off in, in terms of getting Dan's thoughts and, and some of the wider aspects of the game. And then we'd like to finish off the, the session uh, with some questions we received in from the public, um, and we'll get Dan's views on those as well. Um, a good starting point for us then, Dan, is just around... Um, your background really in the game, if you want to give us a bit of an overview of your journey when you when you first uh, moved from New Zealand to Northern Ireland, transitioning from sort of the school club game, now to where you find yourself in, in the professional uh, side of the game. Yeah, well, it's hard to believe I've actually been here now about 22 years now, which, um, which was never my intention, but um, that's life, isn't it? Sometimes these things happen and I came just to... Um, play one season for for Bambridge in the All Island League. It was their first year up in the All Island League and my intention was to come play that season and um, head home and start life as a as a teacher, which I'd just finished to be a teacher. But um, as life has a funny way of doing it, it throws you a bit of a curveball and 22 years later I'm still here. But I guess, you know, in, the, in that very first year at Bambridge, um, a, a big part of my role was um, out into the schools at, at Bambridge Academy and at Bambridge High School and around the primary schools in the area um, and, and doing a bit of coaching. And, and as I trained as a teacher, it sort of came naturally to me and I'd always sort of coached, um, you know, even when I was at, at high school, I'd, I'd go up to the mini rugby on a Saturday morning and, and help my dad, who was heavily involved with um with the rugby club at, at, at helping helping out and just being about I just love being about the rugby club on a on, on a Saturday or whatever so um, moving into coaching was sort of pretty natural and and obviously in, in Ulster here then with you know Sullivan or well, Bambridge Academy and then at, at Sullivan um, as my job as a PE teacher there I was doing a lot of coaching and then I got a great opportunity out at Ballyclare High School where um, Mr. Knox gave me free reins to to steer rugby how I saw fit, and that was um, that was probably a period where I did a huge amount of learning. Then, in terms of um, that was where I was really starting to establish what were the the things that I really believed were important to to be coaching young people. Um, yeah. So that that sort of and then whilst I was doing that, I was also continued playing, and then I stopped playing, and just you know I stopped. When I stopped playing, I was at Belna Hinch at the time, and I just moved into co helping out Derek Suffren um, with coaching uh, that side. And um, yeah, and then eventually I got the chance that sort of coaching the, or the opportunity to, to be full time at, at Inst as a coach um, came up. And as much as I love my job at, at Ballyclare at the time, and I love teaching, and I still do enjoy teaching. Um, I had that wee bit of an, an itch that I wanted to uh, go and go and go full time and see how it, it went, and now I'm I'm here with Austin. Good, a, a fantastic journey, Dan. I think you know there's there's lots of correlations there. As you said be, be, between that transition from a from a teacher to a coach, and and if you don't mind sort of getting into a little bit more detail around the I suppose your um, your philosophy really around the school environment, um, and you're particularly interested in on how you view that that journey that a that a pupil or a player at a school would would undertake um you know from first entering the school at at you know under 12 right through to hopefully representing the school at, at under 18 level and and you know staying involved and falling in love with the game um I suppose how do you view that development process and what, what were the important features for you dan as part of that journey well certainly in, in the school you know in that school age bracket 11 to 18 at 11 you know the the most important thing is fun and and that that's ultimately why we all start playing and why we get involved in the game and probably still you know even with the guys in the senior team you know it's it's the fun bits that that really keep them going and um you know so it's really really important to get that interest in the game and because we have you know there's obviously now there's lots more boys going into and girls are going into into you know the eleven plus schooling with a background in mini rugby, but um, there's also a lot of kids that haven't played at all. So you know it's 
making that rugby experience so fun that they want to they want to come back again and again and again and and for me at school like I just think it's such a wonderful unique opportunity when you're at school to to be um, playing with your mates you're in class all day you're straight out of class out for practice and then you're meeting up again on Saturday morning and you're playing and the first conversations on Monday morning are all about your own analysis of of what went well and, and young guys tend to have a pretty you know, some of them are pretty astute as to who's playing well and who's not and what position he should be and shouldn't be and that sort of thing. So, like, it was really, really important for me um, that that fun was the the, the biggest part of it um, at, at, you know, certainly at that under-12 sort of, at that under-12 um, level. But I suppose, you know, you've, as a, as a coach or as the, director of rugby or whatever, when you're in a school, you've also got a responsibility to ensure that there's progression being made. And um, you, yes, you need fun, but I think kids also need to be challenged. And they like they like learning, they're used to learning, they're in a learning environment. So they there's an expectation there um, that they want to be getting better. They want to, you, you know, they get frustrated if they can't, if they see things on a Friday night with, you know, the Ulster team doing, they, they want to be able to do those. So they want to be able to learn those things and then it's you know when you're the leader of that you need to have a, a a bit of a vision as to how you want the game played and then from that vision you're going to look at what what are the important things to in terms of skill what are the important parts of the game that you need to work on really well how do you create an environment where players want to be improving and then as the leader or leaders as coaches how do we set standards that um create an environment that allow that vision to to come to fruition good no oh, excellent just be interested dan on, on getting your thoughts really around um you know probably particularly within our school and, and youth game is, is just how you how you balance that um I suppose area of focus between developing the individual player and, and probably meeting the demands of competition so you know probably from your experience that at Belfast Ince, where you alluded to, you know, as, as one of the top schools, there's, I suppose, a, an element of pressure in, in terms of, of being successful as, as an end product at the top end of the game. But um, how did you place importance really in, on, on the development of the player while, while still trying to be successful in terms of results as well? Yeah, well, that, um, that's a really good question. It's something that I, I um, have a pretty strong opinion on, actually. And um, I remember when I first came over to, to Northern Ireland and I was working in Bambridge Academy with Brian Leslie and and I would um I'd ask Brian at the start of the week who are we playing this week and it'd be quarter down college or um friends or whoever it was and my next question would be well um, what competition that is that in and he'd say oh no it's just a friendly and I'd be like well what do you mean it's just a friendly when do we actually play a game that means something and and Brian would be like no no, no don't you worry it'll mean something and you know, I I think it's wonderful how, how we do it in, in in Ulster and where we don't, you know, in the schools environment. I'm a big advocate for not having to have leagues, not having to have all these competitive. Well, I say competitive as in the um, competition structure to get um, competitive games. So. The thing I liked about that is that it meant for for me at key stage three under under twelve, thirteens, and fourteens, I, I didn't have to worry about the the coaches feeling a pressure to coach this week to get a result at the end of the on, on Saturday morning. And what that allowed us to do is that allowed us to really develop the players in a long term uh, with a long term philosophy. So uh, for 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 me at, at Ballyclare and then at Inst you know my coaching was was i wouldn't say it was irrelevant to what happened on saturday just being and what was coming up in, in the saturday ahead i was coaching more for what is my what is the end game what's the vision i have for how i want the game played what are the skills that are that are important to be able to play that game in the school's cup when these guys are in you know in their senior rugby so um so for me you know the development of those core skills towards that vision was the most important thing and and sometimes that was a challenge with the coaches and, and sometimes it was a challenge with the parents as well who who um who, who really wanted um 
who, who really wanted just to be playing to win. And um, and yes, of course, we wanted to win. And and you know, and the and the boys always knew who won. Of course, they did. But they didn't need to be in a league. They didn't need to be in a in a cup competition or anything like that to to um, you know to to play their best. Um, so th- that was the big thing for me that, that development was w- was the most important thing, and and I would keep preaching that to the boys that if we if we get this right and to the coaches if we get this right, then the results at medallion and and into senior rugby will take care of themselves because we've got you know we've got a game that um, that uh, that is good enough to win. Um, you, the the thing then is then you move towards your 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 tactical sort of coaching as well as you move through the school, school yeah. and into senior yeah. rugby it's not just about the technical then but you're also starting to teach um the the tactical and that side of it as well brilliant brilliant no really really interesting just sort of one one last thing dan around the I suppose the school side of things is, is just that accident transition really um you know what responsibility did you feel for you know your players, particularly moving towards the end of the school year, in, in terms of providing, I suppose, appropriate advice and, and avenues for them to continue playing the game in, in club rugby, um, and maybe you know, just give us a, a couple of examples. What did those conversations, plans look like? Um, you know, particularly the guys that weren't going to, you know, necessarily go on and um, and progress through the the player pathway from an academy point of view. Um, you know, those guys that are progressing. In, um, you know, how, how important did you view that really? Yeah, well, certainly the, the you know the ones going on to towards the professional game or having aspirations for that, that, that was that they were pretty easy conversations. You were just trying to pick out what, what was the um, what was the best best pathway that could you know get them there the, the 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 fastest and give them the best opportunity to to reach their potential. Um, and obviously, you know the the academy at Ulster do a great job and give pretty uh, good guidance on that as well. But for you know, that's only you're talking about. You know, um, maybe one guy a year. Um, sometimes you get a a, a a dream crop like the the, the um, Laurie Hume sort of um, era where there was a few of them. But the majority of the time, it's it's just wanting to keep the guys involved in the game, and and that's where you go right back to age eleven. Fun, with, you know, having fun with your mates and 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 having a great release at the end of the week after school and particularly forgot you know when the pressure of a level and all that is there that that's important as well so my a lot of my conversations centered around you, you know w- w- go and play to have fun and, and enjoy it and um and so a lot of the time i would be steering guys towards their local club go back to your local club it was a wee bit different you know when i was in belly clear the, the local club was belly clear and, and obviously you know uh, Mike up there now is doing a great job, and it's a great link between the the school and the club, and and guys make that transition, and it, and it seems that Valley Clear Rugby Club have a you know a, a great environment there where there's a great link, and it looks like they have a lot of fun. I see their um I see their posts on Facebook post match when they've won. They certainly look like they're having fun. Um, but um you know. All over, all over really on the train from from Lan and, and all sorts. So it was really about getting a connection back with their home club and and playing club rugby. That's what it's about. People want to f- have that sense of belonging, belonging to something um, that gives them a, an attachment to the community and and they get involved. And um, not all guys are going to keep playing, but you know I encourage them all to stay involved somehow hopefully playing maybe they go back and they they help out coaching we would always have yeah. lots of guys yeah. come back and help us coach the first form at, at at school um uh maybe guys will get into refereeing or maybe they'll just join a, a, a rugby club as a as a club member but you know find that attachment and get that attachment to the game and and, and stay involved and um it's a it's a great um it's a great uh social avenue obviously yeah. Excellent. If you don't mind, Dan, we'll, we'll fast forward maybe through to your, to your current role and, and just, you know, give the, the audience a, a bit of an understanding, really, of, of what that role involves. And, and you know, suppose 
your thoughts around why you think why you think skill development is still relevant, really, in, in the senior game and particularly the professional game. Um, so, you know, maybe if you want to just start, with give us a, a brief overview, Dan, of, of what your current role involves within the senior squad. Yeah, so my my, my title is skills coach and uh, covers a, a wide range of things. Um, but, you know, basically sort of where we've got to now is that the players know I'm there as a resource to to use as they see fit. And like I'm not an expert on every part of the game, but I'll certainly help them and steer them in the right direction. So um, a lot of the time it's it's one-on-one -on -one individual skill stuff. And um, and sometimes it's we, with we mini groups um, working on things. Um, and it's a lot of stuff with the injured guys as well, getting them back to um to perform and 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 being better than when they when they got injured but um you know a lot of my role um is it's a it's a part of the the, the big picture and 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 you know dan has driven a you know really um refreshing philosophy on how we want to play the game we want to play it with collective speed and and therefore, to be able to do that, we, we need to have a, a certain skill set. And so, again, it's going back to what is that vision for how you want to play the game? So it's no different at school to it is for for us. So Dan has a vision for how he wants the game played and, and that collective speed and purely each week will have an attack plan. And so, you know, that has from week to week, there'll be subtle changes in what we need to address skill wise. So um, and I'll then try and create those opportunities for the guys, be it on the pitch or, or quite often in the gym to uh, work on their individual skills. But, um, and then, you know, a big part of, of who we are and, and our day to day at Ulster is, is about progressing as individuals and getting better. And um, you know, as soon as we stand still, you know, others will be going past us. So, that that's um that's a really important part of of who we are that that we continue to progress as individuals that um, then progresses the whole squad. So, um, helping the guys with that is is you know a big part of what I do. But I say again, like I'm I'm not an expert um in in, in any of it. Um, but what I what I can do is I can try and help the players work out for themselves and uh, how they can keep progressing or, or who can help them. So, um, and I think that's important at, at every level. I think sometimes, and, and I even think back to myself as a young coach, um, thinking that I had to have the answer to, to all the problems that the players had, or if there was anything that wasn't going right, I had to be the one that fixed it. And and that's not the case at all. None of us know it all. And, and in fact, at, at the senior level, you know, those guys know a lot more about the game than me. The game's evolving so much that they're in at the cold face, they're developing. It's my job is to to keep facilitating that um, development of of the um, of the individuals. Good, excellent. Um, just maybe a, you know a question around that, Dan. In terms of we, we've seen some, I think, stuff in social media, particularly around the how you incorporate the skills as part of uh, some of the athletic development sessions and. What's your views in terms of skills training and making sure that, you know, suppose that that replicates the demands of the game? Um, you know, suppose, suppose moving away from that traditional approach, we would quite often bring people out of a part of a session and they would do things that are that are unopposed or maybe under little pressure. Um, how have you seen that sort of evolve over the past few seasons? Yeah, well, you know, um, what we do in the gym now is, is has been um you know it's been great progress for us and it's created a lot of time for for skill development and that um you know in between sets and reps and that's when the guys are jumping out and doing skill work but um to try and actually could like so you know we we have a we have a game plan at the skill work needs to have a purpose and that purpose is either tied to what our game plan is this week so you know, for us, a lot of the time, you know, we go into Europe and we play teams that are that are much bigger than us. And we so we have to be able to shift the ball. We have to be able to, you know, attack the doorways either side of players. So that could be through footwork. It could be through passing the ball, whatever. So that might be a focus in our skill development that week, you know, shifting the ball. We tip on passes, that sort of thing. Um, but also, you know, as I alluded to before, the, the importance of each player and their individual 
development there, you know, to, to squeeze every drop to get better, to continue to improve. And so finding the opportunities um, on the pitch uh, or in the gym or post session or pre session or whatever to, to keep developing is, um, is really important. Good. And I guess, Dan, that sort of squeeze every drop mentality, um, you know, that would be really relevant in terms of the current situation. You know, we've lots of, I suppose, club and school players now that, um, you know, particularly don't have access to their, to their team sessions. So, you know, just, uh, I suppose, embracing this opportunity now where, where it's a chance where people could focus on, on some of the areas they need to develop as an individual. Yeah, it is. It's a challenge, isn't it? Because, um, it, you know, like, it, it, it is a challenge. People are limited for space, maybe limited for equipment, limited for someone to catch the ball and give it back to them. So, you know, the big thing at the moment is to be inventive. And there's so many great things you look out on social media at the minute, and people are passing the ball into all sorts of silly targets or kicking the ball into it or whatever. But, um, you know, and, and I guess the other thing is that we're not sure when we're getting back playing and so that that's a that's a difficult mindset to to be training without an end goal there but um yeah so our guys will have their have their critical drops that they know is something that they can improve on and then as coaches we're trying to give them ideas and, and opportunities that they can work on those at home but you, you know even with, with with my own kids i'm saying you know each each day we're trying to do something different we were playing badminton yesterday and 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 just being active and the crossover of skills you get from one thing to the other is is hugely important so well my message would be just you know keep it do, do everything and anything you can all sports but be inventive as well make games up and um a wee bit like probably when you and i were young um gav there wasn't um, a lot of the games we had to play, we had to make up ourselves because yeah. there wasn't the social media and that to steer us in that direction. So, um, how inventive can you be? Yeah, no, absolutely. absolutely. Brilliant, Dan. Some some fantastic I think, words of wisdom there. If you don't mind, we'll, we'll just finish off the last couple of minutes. Um, we invited some questions in from in from the public, um, and sort of I've selected a, a probably four or five out here that um, you know are, are pretty relevant. Um, first one comes from from Derek McGimsey. Um, Derek's posed a question around your thoughts on flair players. Um, you know, do you feel in the modern game we've produced a, I suppose, a system where, where we've created a lot of robotic players, guys are, are doing the same things, um, and how would you encourage, I suppose, those flair players to, to express themselves and have the freedom to do that? Yeah, that, that's a good question. and um, I, I'd like to think that um, the game is moving, I, I think, uh, you know, 10 years ago, it was certainly getting very robotic. And you see some teams that are like that. But, um, you know, we we, we want to create the, these opportunities of wee bits of magic because, by and large, most games uh, at the top level are separated by moments of individual brilliance. Um, the one that keeps haunting me is Jacob's uh, chip and chase against the All Blacks to beat them. Yeah. Um, you know, so it's, you know, that's a that's a wee bit of flair. It's a wee bit of individual brilliance within, um, you know, a structure. And um, so that's really important. But, you know, for, for coaches, and, and I can hear myself in the past, you know, you're coaching your team and you, and you drop, don't drop the ball. Um, is not giving them the opportunity to really challenge themselves, you know, like... Uh, if we have a if we have a really good challenging session, they probably the ball should be dropped because yeah. we're under a lot of pressure. We're trying to push things on. So um, how we coach has got a a big part of of that flair as well. But you know you would hate to see that flair go out of the game because those moments are brilliant. Jacobs chip and chase and the likes. The um, the other things that that people remember and the other things that get people up out of their seat when they're watching the game. Good, yeah. Um, pretty short one here, Sam Duncan. Uh, Dan, most skillful player you've worked with? Anyone stand out? Um, gee, was um, there's a lot of really skillful guys uh, in the Ulster squad. Obviously, you know, Coons is a, a, a really skillful goal kicker. And then, you know, you've got the massively skilled guy. You know, you have Sean Reedy in, in the fours, who's a 
he's got unbelievably uh, unbelievable catch pass skills and his offloading and um and, and that sort of thing and then you look at the footwork of of some of the backs rob little and um so that, like skill is such a wide yeah. ranging thing yeah. but um uh, to to single one out as the most skillful is is pretty tough those yeah. guys i've said yeah. there's, there's plenty of them and it, it's such a, a a broad skill is such a broad uh, range the skill of holding up a scrum is um is a pr pretty unique thing too it's a pretty skillful thing yeah. um but uh certainly the the guy actually in the after squad who if we do any skill challenge or anything in the gym uh, we have we competitions from time to time the guy that um quite often wins it he actually holds our um 30 second tennis ball um throw against the wall he holds that record um and he holds the record for catching the most balls in one go that's rob herring so um okay maybe rob's the, maybe rob's the most skillful guy in the austin squad <laughs> Um, just related to that, Dan, what would you see as being the, the three most important skills maybe a, a young player should focus on in terms of their development? What stands out for you? Um, yeah, for me, I, I think catch pass. Um, that, that's that's massive. I even, you know, I remember when Michael and James, uh, Michael Laurie and James Hume were, were at school and, you know, even saying to them that they could, and so much of their rugby at school, they could catch beat players and away they go themselves. But, you know, as I'd say to them, if you two guys can give me an extra metre of space on your speed of your catch pass, by the time that gets to the winger, that could be five metres of space. And, you know, so catch pass is huge. Um, footwork, the ability for to, to be able to beat players, to, to, to find space and dominate that, that um, that contact area is, is huge and then the one-on-one -on -one tackle um that's you know good good tackling is yeah, is yeah. um the, the the foundation of a of, of a good defending team and that's half your game so that'd be mm -hmm. my three i'd be pretty clear on that good and and just one final one there dan from uh, patrick grinter uh patrick's interest in just sort of an understanding what does your role involve in, in match day and, and sort of what, what's highlights, you know, what, what do you get your buzz out of on a match day? Yeah. Uh, my role on match day then, yeah. So um, obviously at the ground uh, nice and early for the, for the home matches and um, and um, then any of the guys that want, want a wee bit of skill primers. So it could be um, Will Addison likes to do a bit of tennis ball work and just to get his hand eye going, that sort of thing. So it'll be done inside and then uh, and then obviously once we get out on the pitch, it's mostly pre-game working with the um, working with the kickers and, and getting them primed. But there's other individuals like to do wee things. Um, Kieran Treadwell likes to do a wee bit of footwork and to carry stuff that I, I get the pleasure of holding on to the bag while he smashes into me. So um, and then in game, um, Roddy and I then will we'll run messages on. So the uh, Peely, Jared and Dan are upstairs and they'll be feeding messages down to us and we'll We'll, um, we'll we'll feed those to the key leaders. Normally, I'm trying to get to the backs and Roddy to the forwards, and and uh, you know it might be me talking to Billy, just talking about what it, you know what our plan was and are we sticking to it and different things. So um, and and really just trying to uh, help them out as best as possible. If I, if I'm seeing things that um, or the guys upstairs are seeing things, we'll try and feed them into the players. But um, yeah, and um, the highlight is is like a coach at any level. The highlight is when you see your team executing what you've yeah, worked hard yeah. on all week, and when it comes off, there's um there's a real you know there's a real buzz in that as a coach, and I think that's at any level. That's why we're and that's the enjoyment is the is the is the game on on Saturday or Friday night or whenever it is. So seeing those plans come off, um, that's when you get a real buzz. Yeah.